back to the left a little bit, I think you saw it grow there. Okay. Yeah, I think it did. I spit out, I can't really make it out from here. They're all on that top, third, oh, yeah, okay. but nice solid hit. Come down a little bit more. Yep. I think it nicked. Well, there's certainly one in the center now, but there, yeah, I'm not sure which one that was. <laughs> Okay, today we're out here having a bit of a play and doing a bit of testing. We're hoping the fog's going to lift so we can do a bit more of a play with, uh, with a male and lever action, a 357 that we've got there. Uh, the other thing we're doing is playing with a little bit of a system that I have um, developed uh, over the last little while. It's actually the reason I got, one of the reasons I got a chassis rifle uh, or chassis for this um, Power 1500 was to be able to build my bipod system. Um, and it's just the first stage of it, it's just something that I'm working with at the moment and developing. But essentially, as you can see, whether you re realise or not, these are just Atlas bipod legs. They're the long Atlas bipod, long leg, um, long legs from them, uh, which is all that stuff there is all straight from Atlas. So I can run all the different feet from the spikes to the claws to the rubber feet. Um, it works in the same principles, it folds up and down, uh, backwards and forwards, all the bits and pieces. I have manufactured this piece or these pieces in the middle. So there's CNC upper and lower clamp uh, and there's a nylon bush that clamps the actual, actual the front of the, um, the, the guard there, the barrel guard. And as you can see, that is set up to where the rifle can actually rotate around very eccentrically, very, very much in the way of in, in the straight center. Rather than rocking over the top of a bipod like normal, this is going through the center. There's other bipods that are designed this way bit more in the military stuff and the big rifles. Um, this is trying to be something that works with stuff you can get and has a little feature that can that you can get to bolt on. So at the moment it's just developing. Um, it's working pretty nicely. I it is clamped on the bottom so you can raise that tension. I plan to have that so that's able to be raised even further. It's not bad like it is. It actually finds itself quite rigid and you can actually you can see this is empty but you can actually function quite a lot without moving anything at all. Um, at the tension I've got it and yet it still gets on a target very easily but probably will run a tension on it. The other features and the reason I like this system not only is it nice and high center of gravity so it balances itself quite well but also it runs because it is what it is with long legs and a very high um, pivot point when you fold these legs down you can get very low to the ground very low rifle on that sort of score. Still got the same features in the way of it's rotating, it's nice and neat and tidy, uh, it's low to the ground. The other thing in this score is it folds away very nicely. So one of the features I really like about this idea in my, in my head, locking properly, yep, um, was essentially that was going to fold away into very much tucked away, very neat and tidy on that score. So as a functional gun, this is now getting fairly thoroughly set up. As you can see, for shooting on a bag or that sort of stuff, there is some little lumps here, not, not much. That's going to slide over the top of the bag without too much fuss, it all works nicely. This one runs a rail, so I can run my tripod bipod system for the hunting and stuff that we do on occasion with this. Those are the rounds I was actually just did a little checking and testing things with today. Um, it, it is up, so it's out of the road, very easy to deploy. It is the normal Atlas, Atlas system in the way of deploying it, press the buttons, it's down, pull your legs out to where you want them to be, you're, you're down, you're on, you're in getting on a target nice and easy so at this moment it is um, all in principle um, come up very well very happy with it there's some testing I want to do with with all the features and how they operate and see how it actually operates uh, but to me um, I'm wrapped it folds away as uh, nearly nothing in a side profile at least um, it's it's top profile it is our little bit it still fits in all my cases without any fusses on that type of thing goes away in the cupboard without any problems quite easy to remove um, essentially underneath here there's simply a couple of bolts the lower clamp comes off and I have this nylon bush that's made it's actually got a little track in there so that rotation actually happens um, very straight can't get off there's a couple of screws that go through so not only is the actual piece mounted solidly to there um, by clamping it but a couple of screws that go through into the actual um, aluminium guard so it's not going to go anywhere but at the moment it's just a test, it's just to see how it all goes, 
Um, I'm happy with it, it's testing nicely. I'll go home and look at the footage and see how everything functioned. Um, yeah, wrapped with it and we'll see how we go. Might be something that we actually bring to the market. Um, we, we um, we're, like I said, at the moment it's just testing. I machined up a couple of these. I want to do half a season of messing around and playing with them and see how they go. But um, certainly in its concept form of what I wanted, a low profile, nice tuck away, long leg, short leg, high centre of gravity is all things I was hoping for. Anyway, we'll, um, this, this fog is starting to clear. We might be able to shoot some distance today. We'll, um, we'll go out and see how we go with it. Okay, there right. we go, 850 yards. Yep. It should be dialed in there. Okay. Just struggling to see the little bugger. Where is he? Should be, there he is. Left. Oh, way left. Yeah. About five targets from it. I put this to the wrong side. Oh. <laughs> Do you want a hand? No. Spot my target. Oh, too high, sorry. Oh, three o'clock. One target right. Uh, level, oh, quarter target low, three targets right. I've lost the target again. Um, up from the, uh, yeah, out that green strip, go up from that. You know, I know roughly where it is, I just can't make it out. Hit, I think. Hang on, I've got to get closer. I heard it tang. It's really brightened out. Yep, four o'clock, five o'clock, on plate. <laughs> <What? laughs> awesome. Well, okay. Well, let's do another one. That was a bit frickin' easy, Sam. <laughs> How's that possible? I was struggling to see it. Tall. Quarter of a target left, half target tall. Right, level the bottom edge of plate. Okay, well, well, we probably should try and put another hit on plate, but um, well, so we'll give it a go, eh? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> I wouldn't have thought it would have been that easy. Yeah. Where's it gone? Oh, right, you're just off the edge of plate, three o'clock, quarter of a target right. Tall, quarter of a target tall, half target left. Left, uh, half a target. Right, one target, uh, sorry, level top edge of plate, two targets right. Two o'clock, one and a half targets right. Tall, level with right in. Oh, just over the top, twelve o'clock, just. Oh, just off the right edge of plate, just. Three o'clock. I got a whole workout again. Yep. Well, I'm not a hole, is I know where to aim. Yep, ready. Right, just off the right edge, four o'clock, just off edge. Tall, twelve o'clock, just over top. Right. Uh, one and a half targets right, level with the top edge of plate. Four o'clock, 
four o'clock, half tag it right. Hit! On target! Oh. <laughs> Got him! <laughs> well, that was a bit hard to work to hit it again. Yeah, so Better it's just it. off, yeah, just not far from uh, about five o'clock. Okay, today the weather's cleaned up nicely, as you can see. Sun's out, it's three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, we got to do what uh, a little fun thing I was hoping to do. Now, for people who watch our channel know that I used a similar firearm. It's a, it was a 4570 Marlin lever action to shoot over a thousand yards offhand using a little ladder sight and bits and pieces on it to basically do that and shoot it. And it actually wasn't too hard. Because we've got these dry dirt conditions that we're dealing with at the moment, there's a couple of things we've shot from the 22 to the 17 Hornet and now trying this, which is a 357 Magnum. Um, the, the rifle is actually the 1894 um, C Marlin lever action. That's what it's actually shooting, which is these are actually what I found to work the best today. We, we fired a few things up there in the dust before we set up the target. Found the, we we're going to use 158 grains, found the 124s did the job better, so they're just factory ammo. These are Remington, but all the same thing pretty much, the, the 124 grain. Um, worked out a hole that I thought was going to work. Didn't want to modify this rifle to shoot long range, and not a lot of it, so I actually made up. If you watch the video, you'll see I actually had simple little, little bent piece of stainless steel with double sided tape on the bottom stuck on the top here, and a bit of double sided tape that I worked out to put a wind correction on it and worked out the height, trimmed it down until I got it right. Took me about 10 shots. Well, like I said, we, we worked out the hold. I figured out this, put a target in a place that was going to work properly, then actually figured out how to set up my sight. Um, and got that, took us about 10 shots of messing around to get that right. Then I put 10 shots in the magazine, fired away. Actually, it was in four shots that we actually hit it. Um, to start off with, I was able to see the target a little bit better and able to hold onto the target. After we stopped and patted ourselves on the back for hitting so easily, um, I then struggled to see the target. So I went through those six rounds and was basically really struggling to see, shooting four shots, to, four targets to the right and four targets to the left because I was struggling to see. The next tube I went through, I spent another whole tube in there, so it was another 10 rounds on top there. I was actually then all over the place and working out somewhere else to actually hold, other landmarks to use because I just couldn't see the target. Um, and then we're into it, it was actually nine shots of just missing with the next tube of, ammuni of the ammuni ammunition or bullets. Um, I was nine shots and actually hit it again, um, but very consistent once I worked out my holes and the bullet is trailing very consistent. And I would say if we had a nice bit of slope a little bit further up, then putting, getting it back to 1,000 yards, yeah, it's not going to be a lot different. The, the little crude system worked nicely um, and it is 850 yards, 852 or 56, so I don't know, we'll, we'll do that right now and actually press the button on the GPS and go up there on the iPhone I should say, go up there and we'll verify the range for you. But yeah, that's a um, 357 Magnum, lever action Marlin, 850 yards um, and just a bit of fun. So we see you up at target, we'll see you up there in a bit. Okay, well here we are up at target, our two hits. Yeah. So I went through that, I basically, first run got on really easy actually. Um, but then really struggled to see the target in the way of through, through the naked eye with my sunglasses on. I found it really hard to see. Um, after that hit, I was really just just really struggling to find it at all. So I actually picked a spot or picked some landmarks, um, which was the green. There was a green tinge coming through here, um, and there was a directly up behind a particular spot in those trees. Even though I was holding my dot on the target, I was finding that by using those landmarks to actually find where my target was. Which once I figured that out, it was on pretty easy. You'll see there's actually marks all around here um, where it was hitting very close so um, yeah not not that hard actually but um, the, the 357 stuff it actually dented the steel it's only 3 mil mild steel but it actually still dented out here at 850 yards and I would say to be honest with some slightly better conditions like being able to see the target um, you'd be, I'd be able to go back it's going to go to a thousand yards in that same sort of thing but um, anyway just a bit of fun I will verify the range that we actually had um, now this is the iPhone app called measuring tape um, and there we have 852 yards. So measure take app for iPhone. 858 yards. It just changes mine oh, too. Oh, sorry. <laughs> but, um, yeah, 858 yards. 357 Magnum shooting. I was saying the 124 grain. They're actually 125 grain Remington um, 357 Magnum rounds. But um, 
Anyway, just some fun. Today also I put on here, which you see about my um, the bits and pieces on the bipod we're messing with. Um, and we had ridiculously foggy conditions, but as you can see, it's um, turned into a, a really nice um, early winter's day. Anyway, thanks for checking us out, guys, um, and we'll catch you next time.